Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the National Museum of the American Indian. My name is Keevan Lewis, and I am the outreach coordinator here at the NMAI that oversees the NMAI's Artist Leadership Program. Today, we have four great national and international recognized artists from the communities in the United States and Mexico. They have been here in Washington, D.C. for the last two weeks, conducting research in the Smithsonian's collections in preparation of their planned community projects that will be either a youth public art project or an artist community workshop. The Artist Leadership Program offers an incredible personal and artistic experience that often reconnects artists to indigenous cultural materials for inspiration, discovery, and a challenge to their own personal boundaries. Additional information about the NMA Artist Leadership Program and previous personal stories from indigenous artists may be found on our website, right underneath Connect. But before we begin today's program, and as a courtesy to the people around us and the presenters, can we turn off the uh, um, electrical gadgets so they won't make any noise? Please note that today's event is globally live webcasted and digitally recorded for an ageless effect. I would like to make a special thank you to the NMEI staff for making this event possible and I would like to extend a special word of thanks to our panel moderator, Dr. Gabby Tayak, who is a, an important member of our NMEI research team. Like I said previously, today we are privileged to have four gifted and recognized artists whose background includes dance and multimedia performance, Zapotec textiles and natural dyes, Seneca beadwork and clothing patterns, and Penobscot ash sweetgrass basket arts that will enlighten, inspire, and challenge our creative thoughts. Please welcome the 2015 Artist Leadership Program participants, Marta Garcia, Porf Porfirio Gutierrez, Lindley Logan, and Teresa Sacord to this art panel discussion titled, Bringing It Home, Artists Reconnecting Cultural Heritage with community, a theme that is at the core existence of the NMAI's Artist Leadership Program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Keevan, and to all of you for being here. I'd like to give uh, greetings and thanksgivings. It's, it's an interesting thing being um, Piscataway here in Washington, D.C., uh, which is our homeland. So on, on that note, I also wanted to welcome you from our community to all of you. Um, yesterday, a truly great artist of words and world change, John Trudell, started his journey home to the spirit world. John Trudell was a Santee, and he was on the forefront of the American Indian movement starting in the late 1960s and he continued to shatter through much silence um, on the history and the contemporary experience of Native peoples. He worked towards healing communities to provoke awareness on a global scale. So indigenous artists have been doing this kind of work for centuries, for millennia. After all, Sitting Bull was a flute composer. Geronimo was a visionary. We have so many people, countless thousands, who have been able to transform their art, their vision, to bring it back home and to go back out in the world. So today I'm, I'm really, really excited to introduce four very innovative and accomplished indigenous art leaders. And they've been deepening their work by taking their own sense of self from the present reaching back into the ancestral material and bringing it forward. So today we're going to hear something about their findings, what inspires them, what compels them, how it is that art does match together leadership for change and continuity at the same time. It was John Trudell who said, I think it's the responsibility of every human being, not just those who wear the identity of poet, activist, religious person, 
to use our intelligence as clearly and coherently as we possibly can. And so the sensibility being that their projects are working towards their own art, others' art, but also reaching into every sector of their community back home, bringing it forward into the wider world, um, not just within their own indigenous nations and communities, but really um, touching across the boundaries. Many of you have been working across the boundaries. So with that, I'd like to introduce, we're gonna have each of them come up and give a presentation, and then we'll get into a, a conversation and a dialogue, because it's really, it's really within um, the, the way that we converse, the way we can speak to each other, make each other think, that we can start to really increase the knowledge, the profundity of, of the work that they've been doing. So I'm very happy to say that we have Maura Garcia from Kansas, whose artistic medium is dance and multimedia performance. Garcia plans to incorporate elements from the museum's collections and work with youth of the Kansas City Indian Center to create an urban indigenous public performance. Her primary research focuses on the Cahokia and Spiro sites and the central Mississippi Valley mound sites within 500 miles of present day Kansas City and she is Cherokee and Metamuskie. We also have Porfirio Gutierrez, who lives in California and is a master Zapotec weaver who works with natural dyes. Gutierrez plans to research Zapotec tile art fabrication techniques and to verify the methods used in the past that are still used today. And he'll do his community project in Teotitlan de Valle de, uh, near Oaxaca, Mexico a town known for its traditional Zapotec weavings made with fibers dyed with local plants and insects. We also have Lindley Logan, who lives in Washington State and works with Seneca beadwork designs. Logan will do his community project in Tanawande Onondawaga Yoenzadze, his traditional longhouse community in New York State. And his primary research focuses on Seneca, Iroquois, Haudenosaunee beadwork, clothing patterns, as well as clothing materials such as porcupine quill work. And finally, we have Teresa Sicord, who lives in Maine, and she's a nationally known ash and sweet grass basket maker. Sicord will share her knowledge and experience from the NMAI with the Penobscot Nation and other Wabanaki basket makers at the Hudson Museum at the University of Maine and in the Penobscot Tribal community on island on Indian Island, Maine. So as ash trees become extinct due to the invasive emerald ash borer, she is researching Wabanaki basketry to learn more about other non-traditional materials in weaving practices such as basswood fiber and cedar. She's also the founder of the Maine Indian Basket Makers Alliance. So with that, I would like to welcome Mara up and then we'll go um, in order so that you can share your work with everyone. Thank you.